What was that? Excuse me. Are you okay, Katie? I feel fine, Leo. <sighs> Are you sure? Oh, hi, Junior Ranger Farah. I found a proboscis monkey that lost its honk. A proboscis monkey? That's right. They're known for their honks, but this monkey just can't do it. That's a pretty big nose. <laughs> Choo! That was a loud sneeze. It's Katie. I think she has a cold. <sighs> and a really stuffy nose. A stuffy nose? Of course! Maybe the proboscis monkey has a cold, too. It can't honk because of its stuffy nose. Good thinking, Farah. We'll be right over to help. Thanks, Leo. Ranger out. There it is. The proboscis monkey. Proboscis monkeys have large noses. Male proboscis monkeys have larger noses than female proboscis monkeys. In fact, a male's nose can measure over 10 centimeters. So the monkey Farah found is a male. That's right. Their large noses help them honk louder, while proboscis monkeys use a variety of sounds to communicate Males, in particular, tend to honk to attract females and scare off intruders. We have to help him get his honk back. Hi, guys. Hello, Farah. I found him sitting alone. <gasps> oh, dear. I'm fine. I don't have a cold. Let me check my handbook. Are you sneezing, Katie? I'm not. <laughs> Choo! Check. You have a cold. And just like the proboscis monkey, my handbook says you need to keep warm. I don't need to. <sighs> this feels nice. Thanks for the scarf, Bara. But I don't think keeping warm is enough. Katie's right. What else can we do? It says here that healthy foods can fight a cold. There are plenty of fruits in the forest, and fruits are healthy. Great idea, Farah. Let's go pick some for the monkey. This ripe fruit looks good. The proboscis monkey will love it. No ripe fruits for the monkey. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. <laughs> the proboscis monkey can't have any ripe fruits. Because of how their stomachs work, it's dangerous for proboscis monkeys to eat ripe fruits. They might fall sick from it. Instead, Proboscis monkeys prefer unripe fruits. Like this one, Ranger Rocky? Yes, that's perfect. Besides unripe fruits, proboscis monkeys also eat leaves. Leaves sound healthy too. So we'll have to pick leaves and unripe fruits for the proboscis monkey. Glad I could swing by to help. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Bye, Bye Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. <laughs> Can you honk now? Oh, dear. It didn't work either. What else can we do? Huh? What's happening? Hey! Where are you going? Wait for us! Whoa! Let's follow them. Cheer him on, hero. Jetpack activate. <laughs> oh dear, what's going on? The other monkeys are ignoring him because he can't honk. That's horrible. That's it. We have to help him get his honk back. Must find a treatment. Got it. Another way to clear a stuffy nose is to use steam. Steam? I have just that. Here, Leo, place this under the monkey's nose. Great idea, Farah. The hot steam from the tea will clear his nose. Here, Katie, you need this too. <sighs> ah, wow. I can finally breathe normally again. And you said you didn't have a cold. Can you honk now, monkey? It's still not working. 
Wait, what's that sticking out of his nose? <gasps> Something stuck. It's coming out there. A leaf? He's hiding. It wasn't a stuffy nose. His nose was stuffed with a leaf. They're friends again. Bye, monkey. Have fun. <gasps> Let's go home, Katie. We need to get you to bed. Mission accomplished. Be careful, Leo. There, all done. Huh? Why did it fly away? Is there something wrong with our birdhouse? I thought birds like birdhouses. Oh, hi, Junior Ranger Farah. What's up? Hi, Leo. I'm at the Komodo National Park, and I found the most amazing thing ever. What did you find, Farah? An egg. Huh? An egg? Here's a photo of it. Do you know which bird laid the egg? Hmm. It looks like a chicken egg. But I compared it with photos in my handbook, and the egg I found is different. It's bigger than a chicken egg. How exciting! I'm sure we can find out more on the computer. Let's see what type of bird laid the egg. That's not a bird at all. It's the egg of a Komodo dragon. A dragon? Farah found a dragon egg? It's not really a dragon, Leo. Komodo dragons are the largest lizards in the world. They can be found on the many islands in Komodo National Park in Indonesia. Komodo dragons lay about 30 eggs in their nests. But I only found one egg. And it was on the ground with no nest in sight. Oh, no. Was the egg separated from its nest? <gasps> We have to return it. Don't worry, Farah. We'll be right over to help. Okay, see you guys soon. Ranger out. Ranger out. All right, let's return the Komodo dragon's egg to its nest. It'll be exciting to visit an island full of dragons. Hi, Farah. Hi, Farah. <laughs> Hi, guys. Huh? Uh-oh, something's happening. <gasps> it hatched. Aw, it's so cute. Hello, baby Komodo dragon. <laughs> I'm sure its mother will be looking for it. We have to find its nest quick. <laughs> huh? What's wrong, hero? Whoa, a dragon. A Komodo dragon. Is that its mother? Let's take the baby over to her. Stop. I would not do that if I were you. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Hello, Junior Rangers. My, my, that is one cute baby lizard. Why did you stop me from returning the baby Komodo dragon, Ranger Rocky? We do not know for sure if that adult Komodo dragon is its mom. Besides, Komodo dragons do not take care of their young. In fact, Adult Komodo dragons are often a danger to young Komodo dragons. Adult Komodo dragons are also venomous. You should be careful not to get bitten. If you do, you should see a doctor and get medical attention right away. It looks like it's up to us to find a home for the baby Komodo dragon. Let's take it away before the adult sees us. Too late! Now there were three of them! They're coming right for us! Oh no! Hurry, Junior Rangers! Take the baby and go! I'll distract them! Got it, Ranger Rocky! Easy. Easy. This must be Pink Beach! It says here that the pink color comes from small bits of broken pink and red coral. When mixed with the white sand, the beach looks pink. It's really beautiful here. But is it the right place for the baby Komodo dragon? It seems safe and warm enough, but I don't think there's anything for it to eat. We'll have to find a better spot then. 
At least Hero's having fun with our new friend. <gasps> Where's the baby Komodo dragon? I'll find it. Where is it? Aha! Found it! It's over there! Komodo dragons are strong swimmers. They can even swim between the different islands in the park. I guess there's nothing to worry about. The baby Komodo dragon can swim back to us. But I don't think the baby is very good at swimming yet. Huh? What's that? Oh no! Not another one! Hero, you save the baby. I'll distract the big one. Jetpack, activate! Wait! It's too dangerous! Be careful, you two! Hey, big guy! Look over here! We got them, Leo! That was close. That was a very dangerous thing to do, Leo. According to our Junior Rangers pledge, I will wait for assistance from a fellow ranger when there's danger. Well, my fellow ranger, Hero was assisting me. <laughs> <sighs> I'm just glad everyone is all right. Now we just need to find a safe place for our little friend here. I found this place while scouting the island. There are plenty of trees around and it's really peaceful here. Best of all, there are insects in the trees. What do you think, Hero? Will this be a good place for our new friend? <coughs> the baby Komodo dragon seems to like the tree. <coughs> I think our new friend will be very happy here. We did it! We brought the baby Komodo dragon to safety! Hero! Hero! Is this thing loud enough? <laughs> Hero, there you are! Leo, I could hear you all the way across the garden! Really? <laughs> Oops, sorry, Katie. Huh? What do you... I forgive you! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Hi, Junior Ranger Kai. What's up? Leo, I really need your help. I lost Patches. Calm down, Kai. Who's Patches? <sighs> Patches is my sister's pet rabbit. I brought Patches to Rabbit Island to play. Rabbit Island? Yeah, it's an island full of rabbits. <gasps> full of rabbits? That sounds fun. It was fun until I lost Patches. I can't find her anywhere. Don't worry, Kai. The Junior Wildlife Rangers are here to help. We'll be right over. Thanks, guys. See you on Rabbit Island. Ranger out. Rabbit Island is a small island just off the coast of Japan. There are hundreds of rabbits on the island, and it is a popular tourist destination. How did so many rabbits end up on one small island? It is said that all the rabbits came from a small group of rabbits brought there by some children. Oh no! It also says that cats and dogs are not allowed on the island. Oh, dogs are not allowed? Sorry, Hero. You can't come with us this time. <laughs> Look at all the rabbits! I'm in heaven! They're so cute! Can I take you home? Hi, guys! Thanks for hopping by! Anytime, Kai! My sister is going to be so mad if I don't find Patches! Do you have a picture of her? I sure do! Here! I see! Patches is a white rabbit with black patches around her eyes! But Patches is special! There's a patch of fur that's shaped like a heart near her tail! Hmm, there are loads of white rabbits with black patches here. It's going to be difficult to spot a heart. I was hoping Hero could help sniff her out. <laughs> Hero, you're not supposed to be here. <laughs> Aw, I can't say no to that. I guess you really want to join us. I don't know, Leo. Dogs are not allowed. Please? We need Hero's help. 
fine. But you'll have to be on your best behavior, Hero. And you'll have to wear a disguise. How about some rabbit ears? Awesome! Here, Hero, do you smell patches anywhere? Wait for us, Hero! Uh, I think Hero is a little distracted. No, Hero, stay! It's no wonder dogs are not allowed on the island. How are we going to look for patches now? We can simply use my x-ray vision to see what's happening underground. Great idea! What do you see, Kai? I see lots of rabbits. Let's find some food to lure the rabbits out. Or we can use a carrot smell bomb. It's going to smell like carrots everywhere. The rabbits are going to love it. One carrot smell bomb coming right up. It's working! But we're back to square one. With all the rabbits around, it's impossible to find Patches. Hmm, does Patches respond to anything special? Well, oh, oh, Patches falls asleep when my sister sings her a bedtime lullaby. So, if someone sings a lullaby and a rabbit falls asleep, we'll know that's Patches. But how are we going to sing to all the rabbits on the island? With this, of course. Great idea, Leo. We should be able to spot a sleeping rabbit from here. Ready, Kai? <clears throat> patches, patches, go to sleep. No more carrots. Time to sleep. Huh? Something's wrong. None of the rabbits are falling asleep. Let me try. Patches, patches, go to sleep. No more carrots, time to sleep. Nope, no sleeping rabbit either. Are we doing something wrong? What if it has to be a girl's voice? Me? All right, for Patches. Patches, Patches, go to sleep. No more carrots, time to sleep. The rabbits are running away. Was my singing that bad? Look, there's a rabbit asleep. White rabbit, black patches around his eyes, a heart-shaped patch near his tail. Patches! It's her! It's really her! We found patches! Yes, and it's all thanks to you, Katie. That was some awesome ranger work. Thanks, Leo. And just in time, it's my sister calling to check on Patches. Can we keep today's mission a secret? <laughs> ah, what's my that? eyes! I can't see a thing. Is, is everybody all right? I'm fine. Just a little blinded. What was that bright flash of light? Leo, Katie, I'm so sorry. I thought you guys were red animals. <laughs> Hi, Hero. Are you all right? <laughs> you should have known it was you, Kai. Why did you ask us to meet you here? There's an animal photography competition coming up. I need your help to find a rare, beautiful animal so I can take the winning photo. But what's with the drone and the blinding flash? Oh, this is the Chimera 1000. Cool! Did you guys see that? What was that? That's my winning photo! Come on, Chimera 1000, do your thing! Let's see! It's just a bunch of colors! The photo looks blurred. We should remove the motion blur to see what's really there. Hmm, fine. I'll see what I can do. But I'm telling you, we're looking at a photo of an actual... Huh? What type of bird is it? Send the photo to me, Kai. I'll search for more information. Sure, Katie. One photo of the bird coming right up. 
It seems the bird is a male golden pheasant. Male golden pheasants are really colorful, while female golden pheasants are just brown in color. Golden pheasants are clumsy flyers. They prefer running instead of flying and spend most of their time on the ground. Some believe that golden pheasants bring good luck. <laughs> That'll get me a first prize. I must take a photo of the golden pheasant. But how are we going to find him? From what we've seen, he's pretty quick. Huh? What's that, Hero? A feather? Not just any feather. It belongs to the golden pheasant. Look, more feathers. I bet if we follow these feathers, they'll lead us right to him. No, the golden pheasant can't be seen in any of the photos. That's okay. I'm sure we'll find him again. We'll get you your winning photo. Thanks, Leo, but the only way we can take a picture of him is if he stays still. Hmm, what if we got him to dance instead? Dance? Yes. It says here that when a male golden pheasant wants to get the attention of a female golden pheasant, it dances. That's another way to stop him from running. But where are we going to find a female golden pheasant? That's him! Hide! It worked! He's approaching Hero! Okay, Hero, it's all up to you now. Try to look friendlier. He's getting closer! Can you try shaking your feathers, Hero? <laughs> I think he likes Hero! Now's your chance, Kai! It's a little dark here, so I'll have to raise the flash. Say cheese! No! Ranger Rocky! Ranger Rocky! <laughs> no! My winning photo! Where did the pheasant go? It's up in the trees, Leo. You see, golden pheasants are timid and shy. They might not be able to fly gracefully, but when startled, they can jump upwards really quickly. But why did you stop me from taking a photo of it? It wasn't the photo that was the problem. It was the flash. Golden pheasants can lose their colors if they're exposed to light for too long. Your camera flash might last for only a second, but for a bird that lives outdoors, every second makes a difference. I'll be on my way now, Junior Rangers. But remember, no flash photography allowed. Got it. Bye, Ranger, Bye, Ranger Rocky. Ranger Rocky. So that's why the golden pheasant runs from bush to bush. Not only does he have to stay out of the light, he's always afraid. And we sure didn't help. Let's make it up to the pheasant, Rangers. Just have to turn this on, and it's done. Great. But what is it? And how is this going to help the golden pheasant get around the forest? Presenting the Kymaflage Cloak. It creates an energy field that reflects whatever is around you, so you blend right in. It'll protect the pheasant from light rays, and it grants him the power of invisibility. Wow! No way! Prepare to be amazed. All you have to do is click your feet together like this. <gasps> he disappeared! <laughs> Where did he go? <laughs> Your camouflage cloak is amazing, Kai. Now you can turn invisible whenever you like. You don't have to be afraid anymore. You can even walk under the sun. So, can I take a photo of you now? I promise, no flash. Uh-oh. The pheasant used the camouflage cloak on us. Oh, no! How are we going to find him now? He's invisible. Come out! I thought we had a deal. How are we going to take a photo of an invisible bird? Uh, yes! <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, 
Junior Ranger Farah. Hi, Leo. I've got some amazing news. I discovered a unicorn. Wow, a real life unicorn? Unicorns aren't real, but it's right here in front of me. Here, I'll send you a photo. Oh, it does have a horn on its head, just like a unicorn. Hmm, there's only one way to be sure. Let's check the computer. Right behind you, Katie. Meanwhile, Farah, don't lose sight of that unicorn. Roger that, Leo. Ranger out! This will be the most amazing discovery. I'm not going to lose it. <gasps> I lost it. Oh, no. Where did it go? <laughs> unicorn, where are you? Come out, come out, wherever you are. Hmm. I've got a sinking feeling. Ah! Quicksand! Whew! <gasps> oh no! More quicksand! In times like this, check the Junior Ranger handbook! Quacking? No. Quails? Not quite. Where's quicksand? The unicorn! Huh? Two horns? Hmm. It's not a unicorn. It's an Arabian oryx. Oh, it has two horns, not one. That's right, Leo. We simply have to look at it from a different angle. The Arabian oryx was almost extinct, but it was saved in captivity and brought back into the wild. Its long, straight horns can grow to about 70 centimeters long. They use their horns to protect themselves and defend their homes. We should tell Farah it's not a unicorn. You want me to hold your horns? All right. Ah! Oof. Thank you, two-horned unicorn. Now, where's my... My handbook! No! Wait! My book! <gasps> my dirt bike! My book! My dirt bike! Leo, it's an emergency! I need help! What's wrong, Farah? Are you okay? I'm okay, but my dirt bike is not! It's stuck in quicksand! Quicksand? We'll be right over to help you get it out, Farah! Ranger out! Let's go, Katie. Farah is trapped in the desert. My dirt bike! I thought I'd lost you. Thank you so much. No problem, Farah. Now I have to go get my handbook back. Your handbook? Yeah, the two-horned unicorn. You mean the Arabian Oryx. Oh, so that's what it is. The Arabian Oryx left with my handbook. It must be long gone by now. Don't worry, Farah. We'll help you get it back. Maybe Hero can find its scent. <laughs> and I'll scan the horizon with my binoculars. Huh? Ranger Rocky! Ranger Rocky? Hello, Junior Rangers. What are you Rangers doing in the middle of the desert? An Arabian Oryx ran off with Farah's handbook, and we can't find it. Do you know anything that might help, Ranger Rocky? An Arabian oryx travels long distances in search of food and water, but they can survive without water for many days, weeks even. It is said that an Arabian oryx can smell rain from far away. Once it detects the scent of rain, it will travel towards it in search of the fresh grass that grows because of the rainfall. Hmm, rainfall? I can check the weather on my tablet. Rain clouds are gathering over there. Then that must be where the Oryx is heading. Thanks, Ranger Rocky. Let's go. Wait for me, Handbook. I'm coming for you. Good luck, Junior Rangers. <laughs> it's getting cold. And dark. And creepy. Ah! Did you see that? What? I don't see anything. But it was right there! There it is again! Where? There! Go, go, 
like a ghost! But ghosts aren't real. Hmm, I don't think it's a ghost either. Let's get closer to check it out. Now, what do we have under here? My handbook! Be careful, Farah. I'll get it for you. Pardon me, Arabian Oryx. Just have to get this for my friend. Got it. Yay, my handbook. Thanks, guys. You can do this, Bello. Just a little more. Whoa! Phew. Got it. Now to get down from here. You know, Pico, some of these vines look and feel kind of funny. See? This one almost looks like a... <gasps> snake! And a big one, too! I've got to get down! Ranger Leo speaking. Huh? Pico, is that you? Where's Peo? What's going on, Leo? I'm not sure, Katie. It's Pico. Pico? Wait, do you hear that? It sounds like somebody's talking. Huh? Something's not right. Send me the video, Leo. I'll see if I can isolate the voice and amplify its volume. Sure thing, Katie. And... Done! Pico, tell them that I'm stuck in a tree. And there's a big green snake right in front of me. I can't get down. Uh-oh. If we zoom in and unblur it... <gasps> Peo! Green snake. Hmm, they're not that big. Can we look at the video again? Some of the vines look a little funny. Just have to do a quick scan. <gasps> a green anaconda? Oh, no! Peo is stuck in a tree with an anaconda. We've got to get him down quick. We can find out more information about the animal on the way there. Let's see. The green anaconda is the world's largest snake. Anacondas are constrictors. They coil themselves around their prey and squeeze them. With their stretchy jaws, anacondas open their mouths wide to swallow their prey whole. Once they've eaten a big meal, they can go for weeks or months without food. Oh boy, we'd better hurry. Look, it's Peo's bag. Pico! Where's Peo? Is he okay? Over here! I'm over here! Whoa, it's huge. Yeep. Don't worry, Peo, we'll get you down. Jetpack Jet activate. activate. Here you go, Peo. Thanks, Leo. Now grab hold of us. Oh, no! Oh, oh, never mind me. Just take this somewhere safe. We mustn't let anything happen to the flower. Oh, no! Don't worry, Peo. I'll get it. And I'll find a way to get you down. We leave no rangers behind. Huh? Oh! Well, that was easy. Where's it going? Oh, no! Guys! No! Not the bug! Now we'll never get the flower back! Hang on, Pale. Let's get you down first. Huh? Pico! No! You'll get hurt! <laughs> no, Hero! Hero! The anaconda's way too strong for them. Katie, help me grab its tail. Stop right there! Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Back away from the tail. What you're about to do is very dangerous. Tangling with an anaconda is a dangerous thing to do. Anacondas are big and strong, but they usually only attack humans when they feel threatened. If you mess around with its tail, it might see that as a threat. Green anacondas may move slowly on land, but they're great in water. They're fast swimmers. And because their eyes and nostrils are on the top of their heads, they can breathe and see even when most of their body is underwater. What do we do then, Ranger Rocky? We have to get my bag. 
No worries, Peo. I'll take it from here. Leave this to the experts, children. What's he going to do? I have no idea, but I'm sure Ranger Rocky has an awesome plan. Now, now. I don't want any trouble, but I'm going to need that bag. Oh, no you don't. Calm down now. <gasps> Ranger Rocky! <laughs> oh, it's hugging him. Now, it's constricting him. Are you sure you don't need us to do anything, Ranger Rocky? <clears throat> nope. I have it all under control. Hurr! Aha! Catch! My bag! Phew, it's all right. It's getting kind of squeezy. Time to get out of here. Be back in a second, Junior Rangers. Oh, Ranger Rocky! Oh, no! Ranger Rocky! Ah! <laughs> Ranger Rocky, you're okay. I sure am. That was amazing. But weren't you scared of the anaconda, Ranger Rocky? It's huge! There was no need to be scared. Anacondas are not out to hurt people. The anaconda was just defending itself. Ranger Rocky is right. We're the ones who entered its home. Well, I've learned my lesson. Never approach or provoke an anaconda when you see one. Always take a tree before you climb it. You never know what's living in there. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, I'm trying to get better at swimming, but it's not fun practicing alone. Why don't we swim together? You go first, Hero. Wow, you're a natural hero. Maybe I should try it your way. Ah! It's a crocodile. There's a small crocodile in the pool. Boy, that was scary. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So if it's not a crocodile, what is it? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is a water monitor. There are different types of water monitors, and the one in our pool is a Malayan water monitor. I see. Still, it sure looks like a crocodile. It's easy to mistake water monitors for crocodiles, especially when they're in the water. But if you look closely, they're quite different. Water monitors have a shorter snout and a longer, thinner tail as compared to crocodiles. But, like crocodiles, water monitors are often found near water and are excellent swimmers. This is because the long, powerful tails of water monitors are used to propel them through the water. Wow! Maybe I should learn how to improve my swimming from a water monitor. <laughs> Don't get too close, though. Water monitors will defend themselves if they feel threatened. I see. So, what kind of food do water monitors eat? They eat small animals, fish, and birds. But if they want to, they can eat anything they can swallow. Yikes! I don't think the water monitor belongs here. What if it eats all the animals in our garden? Well, normally, Malayan water monitors don't live in gardens. They live in forests in different countries in South and Southeast Asia. The one you found comes from this place. Hmm. I think we should return the water monitor to its natural home in the forest. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. I'm sure the water monitor would be happy to go back home. See you downstairs.
There are too many rocks on this bank for the water monitor to dig its home. Look, Leo. What about the bank on the other side? Hmm, that looks like a good place, Katie. There aren't as many rocks over there. Come on, everyone. Let's go over there. Here we go. happening, hero? Let me take a look. A large fishing hook pierced the float. We need to get the hook out and fix the float. Leave the fishing hook to me, Leo. Good luck, Katie. There. But we're losing a lot of air. If we don't fix the float, the jeep will sink. We have to cover the hole. What can we use? The water monitor covered the hole by sitting on it. Thanks, water monitor. Great. Let's head to the riverbank. We made it. Good work, water monitor. Goodbye, little friend. We did it. We found the water monitor's home. Great job, everyone! Yay! Yay! Today, we found a Malayan water monitor in our garden. We learned that water monitors live in forests where they build their homes near water. So we went to a riverbank in the forest and found its home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Look what I got, Hero. It's a marine aquarium, and it has special saltwater plants in it. Look at that pretty seaweed, Hero. It looks like it has eyes. <gasps> it moved. Did you see that too? What do you think? Is this seaweed or an animal? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So what is it? You won't believe it, Leo. It's an animal. The name of this animal is the leafy sea dragon. It's a type of fish. Leafy sea dragons are similar to the more famous seahorses. It looks more like seaweed than a seahorse. I wonder if it eats seaweed. No, it doesn't. The leafy sea dragon is a carnivore, which means it feeds on other animals like tiny shellfish and shrimp. It has a mouth that looks like a straw, which it uses to suck up its food. So there's no food for the leafy sea dragon in the aquarium. The aquarium isn't a good home for the leafy sea dragon anyway. It needs to live in the sea, where there's plenty of food for it. And the best place for leafy sea dragons is in the waters of southern Australia. That's the only place in the world where they can be found, and also where they can be safe. There are laws in Australia to protect leafy sea dragons. People are not allowed to remove these rare animals from the sea without permission. Then let's take the leafy sea dragon back home so it can stay where it's protected. Come and join us. Yes, let's go. See you downstairs. For lots of fun and lots to learn One, two, off we go For lots of fun and lots to learn Ranger Rocky, you got here fast What's going on? I want to make sure nobody comes too close A storm just hit this area 
and it washed a heap of seaweed ashore. Leafy sea dragons live among seaweed, so they often get washed ashore with the seaweed when the waters get rough. Oh no! So there might be leafy sea dragons lying in the seaweed? I'm afraid so, Katie. I'm looking through the seaweed to find them. I want to put them back in the water quickly so that they'll survive. We'll help you, Ranger Rocky. That would be great. Come in. Look, I just found a leafy sea dragon in this pile of seaweed. If you find any leafy sea dragons, put them in here. Yes, yes Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Good job, Junior Rangers. We found all the leafy sea dragons. Since we're taking our leafy sea dragon back to its natural home, we can also bring these, Ranger Rocky. That's wonderful, Leo. Please, take this. Look at how much sea grass there is. This will be a great home for the leafy sea dragons. There they go. Stay safe, leafy sea dragons. We did it. We found the leafy sea dragons a home. Great job, everybody. Hooray! Yay! We found a leafy sea dragon in my marine aquarium. We learned that leafy sea dragons are very rare animals that look like seaweed. They hide in seaweed so that other animals can't spot them. And we took the leafy sea dragon home to Australia because leafy sea dragons are protected there. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Woohoo! Do you see Jane or Zumi yet? No. Nope. Sand dune ahead, Leo. All right. Hit the brakes, Katie. They found us. Hi, Jane. Hi, Zumi. Hi, Leo. Look at this place. It's huge. <laughs> but I see you got yourself a sunboard. Nobody said ranger work can't be fun. We can take turns on it. Now, hold on to this tightly. Stand up straight. Don't let go. Something is coming. Huh? What's coming? <gasps> it is here. <gasps> Sandstorm! Wait, where's Hero? <gasps> Hero! I'll find him. Hurry, get inside. Got it. We can take shelter. Got it. Whew. Is everybody okay? Yep. We sure are. I'm glad we got out of that sandstorm in time. You okay, Hero? You scared us. <laughs> huh? huh? That's not Hero. Oh, no. I grabbed the wrong animal. I'm so sorry, but what are you? And what's with those enormous ears? Over here. I sent you a photo of it, Katie. Can you find out more? Sure, Leo. That is a fennec fox. The fennec fox is the smallest fox in the world. And it lives in the desert. Those big ears help it to release heat so it can stay cool in the hot desert. That's not all. Fennec foxes don't need much water, and they have fur-covered feet 
to protect them against the hot sand. They're perfectly suited for desert living. But Hero isn't, and he's out there alone. Sandstorm or not, we've got to go back for him. Let's go! What are you waiting for, Jane? Come on! <sighs> we are too late. <gasps> Uh-oh. Maybe there's another exit. <sighs> but I can barely see ahead. It's too dark. Just use a torchlight. <gasps> Good thinking. Who's there? Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky? Do you know how to get out of here, Ranger Rocky? We have to find Hero. Hero? Huh? Where is he? I wanted to grab Hero and escape the sandstorm, but I grabbed a fennec fox instead. Well, we can all take a lesson from your new buddy and dig our way out. Fennec foxes use their paws as shovels to dig burrows in the sand. In fact, their burrows can go pretty deep. So, if we all start digging like the fennec fox, we should be out of this cave pretty soon. Then what are we waiting for? Let's start digging. All right. Ah, it feels great to be out of that cave. The sandstorm has stopped. Now let's go find Hero. I trust that you're in good hands, Junior Rangers. If anyone can help you find Hero, it's the Fennec Fox. Besides its ability to dig, it also has great hearing and a keen sense of smell. See you around, Junior Rangers. Bye, Bye Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! The sandstorm has shifted the sand around, but I'm certain this is the place. Hero! The Fennec Fox found something. What is it? <gasps> it's Hero's backpack! Look, a burrow. Wait, come back. We need your help. Don't worry. We won't lose him. Good thinking, Katie. Where's it going? <gasps> Baby fennec foxes. So it wasn't looking for Hero after all. Hold up. Hero! Hero! Okay, I'm sorry I left you behind. We would not have found Hero without the Fennec Fox's help. Thank you. And I'm really sorry I grabbed you by mistake. <laughs> it seems Hero made new friends while we were gone. <laughs> Bye, Bye, Fennec, Fennec Foxes. Foxes! Here's my painting of Hero. Whoa, that's nice! How did yours turn out, Leo? Um... <laughs> it's a little abstract. Ranger Leo speaking. Oh, hi, Junior Ranger Jane. How's the zebra migration going? Have they found fresh grass? Hi, Leo. Hi, Katie. The zebras are still on the move, but a mother zebra has lost its baby in the herd. <gasps> oh, no! Locally, I have a photo of it. Can you come over to help me find the baby? Of course, Jane. The photo will come in handy. Hang tight. We'll be right over. Cool. I'll send you my location. Ranger out. Ranger out. Now let's go. Ugh. Let's find out more about zebras. And get away from this pesky fly. Here it is. The Plains Zebra. Plains zebras are the most common species of zebras. Zebras are part of the horse family, and they are known for their black and white stripes. Every year, thousands of zebras migrate, traveling over great distances to look for food, like fresh grasses and water. Oh boy, that's a lot of them, and they all look the same. Actually, each zebra has a different stripe pattern. No two zebras have the same stripes. Like human fingerprints, its pattern is unique. So we just have to match the stripes. 
And since we have a picture of the baby zebra, it'll be a snap. Hmm, stripes and patterns? I think I'll bring our paint along, just in case. Good idea, Katie. Look at all those zebras. <coughs> Hi, Jane. Hi, Zumi. Hi, Leo. Hi, Kitty. Don't worry, Mama Zebra. We'll find your baby. <coughs> Let's see. Oh, wow. That is a lot of stripes. Whoa, too many. Huh? Leo, are you okay? Oh, thanks, Katie. <laughs> the stripes are a little confusing. Hmm, let's see what else we can find. Ouch, not again. And I thought the fly in our backyard was bad. This fly is worse. It bites. I got it. It says here that scientists scan zebra stripes like barcodes to tell them apart. Uh-huh. So, we can do the same thing. I'll make a zebra stripe scanner. Got it. Now I just have to... Done! There is our scanner. Cool. You just have to aim it at a zebra. And it's a success if the stripes match. Aim at a zebra. Ugh, these pesky flies are getting in the way. Why aren't the flies bugging the zebras? Maybe it's because they've got stripes and you don't. <gasps> Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! What do you mean, Ranger Rocky? Not only do zebra stripes look cool, we're starting to find out that it could be pretty useful, too. Scientists think that one of its functions is to confuse insects like flies, making it harder for them to land on zebras. And if they can't land, they can't bite. Nifty, don't you think? I'll be buzzing off now. Bye, Bye Ranger Rocky. Rocky! How are we gonna get stripes, Katie? Oh, you'll see. This is so cool. It's a good thing you brought the paint over. Hopefully this will get those flies to buzz off. Now, let's get back to looking for the baby zebra. We'll have to scan every one of them. Katie, Hero, and I will use our jetpacks to get a better view. Jane, you brought your own ride? The baby's mother insisted. <laughs> Let's go, Rangers! Jetpack jet activate! activate. <laughs> what if we scanned all the zebras at once? I'll have to use your camera, Hero. It's scanning. Let's see if we can find a match this time. Oh, what's this? It's a match. We found the baby. Yes! <gasps> Leo, no! Oops! Stampede! Huh? Oh, no! I know. Can you get to the baby? I'm sending you its coordinates. We'll take care of the herd. Got it. Stop it! Calm down! There's nothing to be afraid of! Hang in there, little one! We can't keep this up much longer! We need something to stop these zebras! Something to stop them? We did it! See? Told you guys it'd be a snap. Well, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Hit subscribe and click the like icon. <laughs>